Rich Forrester. I just want to remind you about tonight. Logan, isn't this a little ridiculous? No, it isn't to me. I'm getting married tomorrow. I'll be busy tonight. Are you afraid to see me, Rich? No. Good. Then I'll see you tonight at your place. You are here. Not for long. I'm going to get back to the house. Why? I left some sketches there. I've got to uh, get them. Uh, are you going to be gone long? I shouldn't be. Why? Have you forgotten? Oh, no. Taylor and her father. You did forget. No, I, I didn't forget. I ju it just slipped my mind. I've got a million things going here. Well, um, naturally. You're, you're getting married tomorrow. You're under the gun. I wouldn't exactly say I'm under the gun, Mother. I would look at you. I've got to leave, all right? Ridge, you know it wouldn't hurt if you made the decision. It wouldn't hurt what, Mother? What were you going to say? If you decided to postpone the wedding for a while. Why would I do that? Because you're under pressure. You could back off for a couple of weeks and, and get your bearings. I don't need to back off, and I don't need to get my bearings. I'm fine. I'm just extremely busy. All right. I said it. I had to say it, and I won't say it again. What can I do for you? First, you can call downstairs and tell Thorne I'm going to need him from 9 o'clock tonight until 12 o'clock tomorrow night, because he's one best man that's going to earn his title. I'll tell him. And Mother, no more negative stuff, all right? It really doesn't help. Thanks. Oh, Rich. You're frazzled and you're upset because you're marrying the wrong girl. Where are you going? Out. What do you mean, out? Where are you going? It's my business, isn't it, Blake? Where are you going, Karen? There's something that I need to see. And what, may I ask, is that? You know, Blake, I really wish you would stop asking me all these questions as are if I was some sort of prisoner here. Forrester? If he's there. If he's where? Where I'm going. Stop talking in circles, Karen. Blake? Oh, all right. Yes. I hope to see him, but we don't have any plans. Pick up the phone, call him, and make plans. I don't want to. Why not? Because he's getting married tomorrow, so he's probably very, very busy tonight. That's exactly why you have to see him tonight, to stop this wedding. You ease up on me, Blake. Karen, do you want this man or don't you? Of course I do. Then you'd better do something now, because your time is running out. And yours, too, isn't it? Your time with Taylor. Karen, you go to the phone, and you call Ridge, and you tell him you need to see him. No. Do it. Do it now. If Ridge is in love with Taylor Hayes, and he wants to marry her, I'm not going to stop that. Now, those might be your kind of tactics, but they are not mine. Karen, if you don't take some action, you'll lose him. Then I lose him, Blake. If you want to have Ridge, you've got to fight for Ridge. Now, get moving. You know, sometimes I wonder how I ever loved you. Yes, Rich. Sheila Carter? Oh, yes, the woman applying for the nursing position. Yes, show her in. Be with you in a moment, Miss Carter. Come in, sit down.
lived there for how many years? Seven. I see. This is very impressive. You assisted in research as well as nursing? Yes, I was very productive in Genoa City. Ah, so I see. Why did you leave there? Why did I leave? The job at the hospital. I just wanted to relocate. That's not a bad reason. No, the winters back there can be pretty brutal. Almost as bad as the summers. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Sure. Well, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. Well, all those beautiful Forrester clothes that I see in the fashion magazines, you design them? Yes, my son and I. And you're interviewing me for a nursing position. Well, it's a very important position, Miss Carter. The health of my employees is very important to me. You are an exceptional man. Thank you. Eric, I have that. Oh, excuse me. Brooke, this is Sheila Carter. She's interviewing for the nursing position. This is my wife, Brooke. Hi. Nice to meet you. Eric, really, I need you to approve this right away. What is it? It's my R&D budget for the summer, and it can't wait. All right, it won't. Actually, I'd like to talk to you, too. What about? Uh, Ms. Carter, that'll be all for now. Uh, we will consider your application, and we'll phone you one way or the other. OK. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Forster. I'll let myself out. Right. Eric, I really do have to hurry. All right, well, just calm down. I want to talk to you about this, too. All right? Yeah, well, I mean, just give me. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. I hope it's too. Hi, Rich. Hi. I was just, um... Beautiful, aren't they? This is Caroline's garden. The one you were telling me about? This is it. I'm sorry that I just came over. I just, I really felt like I wanted to see it. No, no apologies necessary. I've been kneeling here for some time. It's like I can almost feel her presence. It's true, isn't it? Well, I better go. I guess you have a zillion things to do tonight. Come on in. So, what is it, Eric? It's still not too late. For what? There's a plane leaving for Europe in about three hours. You and I have reservations to be on it. I said no, and I'm not going to change my mind. You're still determined to go to this wedding? Yes, I am, more than ever. Now, will you excuse me? I have a doctor's appointment. You're still having stomach trouble, the nausea? I'll probably end up with an ulcer after all this craziness with Ridge. All the more reason to take me up on this trip. Well, I better start getting ready. Taylor's father is due. Taylor's father? Yes, Taylor's father is in town, and so are some of her friends. Honey, I'm going to say this to you one more time. Ridge is getting married tomorrow. Now, if you're counting on anything other than that happening, you're going to be devastated, and I don't want that to happen to you. Well, I don't want that either. And I am not going to be devastated, because there's not going to be a wedding. Why don't you make yourselves comfortable? Doctor, can I get you and your father something to drink? No, thank you. Then I'll go inform the family that you're here. Thanks again. Look, uh, Dad, th there's something I forgot to tell you. What's that? 
Well, Stephanie, Ridge's mother, sometimes she can be a little abrasive. So can I. Well, no, you don't understand. See, she's very opposed to this wedding. Why? Hi, I'm Kristen, the absentee sister. Kristen, hi, I'm Taylor, and this is my father. Jack Hamilton, a pleasure. It's nice meeting you both. Wow, Ridge is right. You are beautiful. Well, he's a little biased. I think he's accurate. He's a man of impeccable taste, Dr. Hayes. Well, the more reason why I need to meet this fellow. <laughs> well, it won't be long now. In fact... Well, hello, everybody. Eric Forrester. Jack Hamilton, how are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Pleasure. This must be the mother of the groom. How do you do, Mr. Hamilton? Pleasure, an absolute pleasure, Mrs. Forrester. Please call me Stephanie. I take it that you've already met Kristen? Yes, I understand you have another equally as beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. She's working late, so you'll meet her later, as well as our other son, Thorne. That leaves Rich. Where is he, Dad? Here are some pictures of Caroline. Wow. Yeah, we had a lot of photo opportunities. I bet the press followed the two of you around everywhere. Yeah, they did. When they weren't on our tail, I was snapping pictures of my own. Most of these albums are personal, either pictures that I've taken of her or that she took of me. This is incredible. And, and where was this one? My family has a cabin in the mountains. We used to go there a lot. Looks like the two of you clowned around quite a bit. Yeah, we had ourselves a lot of laughs. Did you travel much? We did travel, but keep in mind that uh, we were only together a year. One year and four huge photo albums. Imagine if we'd had 10 years or 20 years. Well, you would have needed a lot of storage space. I love taking pictures of Caroline. Sometimes I wonder if deep inside I didn't somehow know that I'd need these pictures someday. Do you look at them often? Less now than I used to. Yeah, I guess that would be the case. If there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about her. Caroline is a part of me now. She's a part of my spirit. She always will be. You know what's amazing about you, Ridge? What? That you're not bitter when you could so easily be. Oh, I was bitter. Wow, believe me, I was. But it didn't last long. At the time, it seemed like it lasted forever. Do you know you're right? It didn't last very long. You know why it didn't? Why? Because of your sister. Caroline made it her mission in life to prepare me for her exit. All she ever really wanted at the end there was to make sure that I survived her death. She did a pretty great job. Yeah, she did. You know what I think, Ridge? I think that my finding out that I had a twin sister and then coming to Los Angeles and meeting you, I think it's all been directed by Caroline. I think that she is responsible for my being here. Your daughter is one very special individual. And she's been telling me that for years. Oh, stop it, Dad. You're giving them the wrong impression. <laughs> I don't have to tell Mr. Forrester what it means for a man to have a daughter. He's got two very special ones of his own. And so I do. I just wish they both lived a little closer. Isn't that the truth? Then we'd never get anything done. You two would be doting on us constantly. Well, in your case, I'm sure you have a doting mother as well. Oh, well, if I were going to be very honest, Mr. Hamilton. No, Jack, please, just Jack. Jack. I always find that mothers rarely dote on their daughters. Right. They dote on their sons. No, I don't do that either. <laughs> I wonder what Ridge would have to say about that, Mother. I wonder what he would say. Well, it's only been in recent years that Mother has allowed my two brothers to leave the house without signing out. That is a smart woman. <laughs> Speaking of Ridge, uh, where is he? 
Oh, you know, he went up to the house to pick something up. He's not even in the building? Oh, I'm sure he'll be here soon. He knew we were coming over. You know, Karen, you may be right. Caroline's probably up there right now, nudging us all along. Well, I know that she nudged me from Texas to L.A. What makes you believe that? It's just an intuitive feeling. You may be on to something. You have family here, a father. And I'm sure Caroline would have wanted you to know him. Well, she also would have wanted me to know you, Rich. You've been teaching me so much about Caroline. It's almost like I feel she's still alive. Yes. She is still very much alive, isn't she? Does it hurt when you look at me? Why would it hurt? Because I'm so much like Caroline. Does it bring back painful memories? There are no painful memories of Caroline. Not even at the end? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ridge. I didn't mean it to sound that way. No, I know you didn't. It's just she was so young. The two of you had so much ahead of you. So much to live for. And all through her brief life, I was just off in some other world. Completely unaware that I even had a sister. All I had was this constant aching inside. An emptiness that I never could really understand. Like a part of me was missing. It was Caroline. You know, we could have so easily have been one person. But for some mysterious reason, at the moment of conception, we split into two people. Two genetically, spiritually identical people. And I never knew her. I never even had a chance to know the one person I would have been the closest to. And now it's too late. Hello? Is this Sheila Carter? Yes, it is. Sheila, this is Eric Forrester. I just wanted to call and congratulate you. The job is yours. Oh. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Mr. Forrester. I promise you, you'll never regret it. Here's the file on Mrs. Forrester, Doctor. Oh. Have I got some wonderful news for you, Brooke Forrester? <laughs> 